This is section A of the practical assessment. This one is investigating the effect of temperature on the rebound height of a squash ball. And this section A is the experimental part. So you can see here that the uh, booklet itself contains an introduction, so what the task is, the apparatus that you will need to use. There's a diagram here to uh, assist you in setting the experiment up. We've got more information over on the other side over here. And it's really, really important. Before you start doing anything in this, you read this information. That would be my top tip. But the first marks are available over on the next page, and they come for the risk assessment. So it asks us to complete the following table. So hazards. The hot water can scold. The risk is I could splash it onto my hands while pouring. So imagine that you're tipping it, say, from a kettle. Uh, that would be uh, a potential risk. And my control measure would be to pour water uh, carefully. Cut spell. The wet floor is slippery. Well, the risk there is that I could uh, slip. I uh, know, unbelievable. Uh, slip over. And the control measure would be to uh, clean up can't spell at all this evening. Clean up any spills. Okay, and then we're going to flip over. Now, here we're going to record the results from our results table. They've encouraged us here, underneath the risk assessment, to do anything in rough. So, as you're doing your experiment, you should, you should note down your results over here. And then when you're ready, you should include them... Um, in a neat table, this is the one that the examiner would prefer to mark, although they will mark it from anywhere. So here is the setup. We've got a metre ruler clamped upright, we've got the beaker of hot water, we've got the squash ball, and we've got some tongs to remove it in case the water is too hot to handle the ball safely. We're going to take the ball to one metre up, and we're going to drop it from here, and we're going to measure how high it bounces to. So I'm just going to draw the table that I need, and having looked at the experiment, um, I'm being told that I should have five repeats, and it's sort of implied that I need a mean to go along with those. So I'm going to need five columns. I'm just going to draw them roughly. No one's really going to measure your results table to make sure that it's all beautifully arranged or anything. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to need a sixth one for the mean, and then we'll need one down here to record our temperatures in okay so we're going to have some column column headings so i'm going to put into my column headings i'm going to put temperature now lots of you will put temp and i'm going to put that in degrees celsius if you put temp the exam board will take a mark off you so please don't and then all of these along here are going to be rebound height Okay, so I'm going to have the first time I do it, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, and then finally I'm going to have the mean. And if you read on the other page, it's saying that all of these are going to be in centimetres. So I should put in centimetres. It's just occurred to me, I could have made that easier for myself by putting centimetres up there instead. Okay, so that's what your results table should look like, and now I'm just going to fill in all the data that goes with it. So I've been asked to do uh, five different temperatures, starting at 20 degrees. Okay, and now I've got those. I'm going to calculate the means in this column here. So the mean, remember, is all of these five values here added together and then divided by five. So that gives me for this one 23.0, 30.6, 36.4, and 50.0. Now I'm just doing some good practice here. I'm using this point zero here to keep everything the same number of significant figures and decimal places, okay? 
over to section B. So section B is the more exam based bit. It's uh, got longer answer questions um, and it's based on section A. So I'll need my data from section A in order to do section B. Okay, so we're going to flip over and the first thing it asks me is the independent variable from this experiment. You can refer back to section A and if you do it'll tell you that that's the temperature of the ball. The dependent variable, that's the one that you're going to measure rather than the one that you have changed. So that's going to be the rebound height. And then the control variable. So um, there's a couple of answers that you can go for from here. So I'm going to use the same drop height because that will give the same gravitational energy to the ball every time. So if you drop it from different heights, you're going to be giving the ball different amounts of energy, and that's going to affect the bounce height. You could go for, you don't need to, don't do an extra one for the sake of it, but perhaps you've gone for same type of ball. Uh, so why was it controlled? Different squash balls are more or less bouncy. I don't know if you know anything about squash, but you can get different bounce levels of ball. Um, they have different color spots on them. The next one is that we're, we're looking at this uh, two pieces of data here. So Peter and Colin are having an argument with each other. So we've got 34 centimetres versus 34.2 centimetres. So the resolution is the smallest amount that can be read. So I can read, by the looks of things, I can read 0.1 centimetres. So it's plus or minus 0.1 centimetres. Colin argues that his measurement is better. Discuss whether Colin is correct. I think Colin is wrong. So Colin is wrong now, when you actually try doing this experiment yourself, you'll see that it's almost impossible to judge where the ball bounces to. It's very rough measurement. Um, so Colin is wrong because um, it is impossible to actually it's almost impossible to actually use the millimetres on your metre ruler. You'll see when you have a go yourself. Right, next up we've got a great big piece of graph paper. The important things we're going to try and do here is we're going to try and produce a graph that occupies at least half of the axes and in doing so we need correct um, y-axis and x-axis labels. We're going to need to plot our points accurately and we're going to have to draw a line of best fit. So I'm going to get on with that now and speed this whole thing up. So as you can see, I had uh, a little bit of fun drawing that, so I had to rescale the bottom axis. I had to uh, think about my scale again on the um, y-axis. I have managed to get in my units down here. I'm definitely filling more than half of this graph paper. I've got my unit and my label on this side here. Just make sure that they kind of match what you have in your results table and everything's okay. Now, the last thing I need to do is draw my line of best fit. Now, I've been blessed with a beautifully straight line today. So that should be relatively easy to do. Try and make sure that you're, you have the same number of points on either side. Um, so I am going for, well, they look pretty good, so I'm doing that, I think. I'm not going to stress 100% on that. I think it looks pretty reasonable. Goes pretty close to all of my points. Quite happy with that. So there's your graph. Then we need to flip over to the next side. 
Use your graph to describe the relationship between the temperature and the rebound height. Well, uh, as uh, temperature increases, so does the rebound height. So that's the first mark. For the second mark, we need to talk about the, the, the shape of that uh, line. So it's a straight line. Um, so I'm going to say it goes up by the same amount every time. Okay, the next bit we have is uh, a little bit of... Um, uncertainty work here. So calculate the uncertainty in the rebound height for your lowest temperature. So we need our data back again. So my lowest temperature was 20. So it's saying the maximum height minus the minimum height. So my maximum height is 26 minus my minimum height, which is 19. So that's a difference of 7. 7 divided by 2 is 3.5, so 3.5 is the uncertainty in this reading. Explain whether your data for the lowest temperature is repeatable. Uh, I think that's pretty good actually, so um, it is repeatable because, and this is the important bit really, because the uncertainty is very low. Okay, 3.5. Okay, now they're not actually that bothered about that particularly. It's about matching those two statements together and using this uncertainty value from here. Now, two inaccuracies. You've got a few to go out here. I'm going to talk about the two most obvious ones. One is in the um, measuring bounce height. That was difficult because it was moving so fast. The ball so fast. And what we can do perhaps to improve this to improve, we could slow the whole thing down, right? To improve we could use a slow motion camera and replay the video. Okay. And what else could we do? Well, one of the other problems was the temperature. So uh, the ball changed temperature while it was dropped. So if you remember, you put it in the water for two minutes and it got to 40 degrees and then you dropped it and you dropped it and you dropped it and you dropped it. And during those times, the ball was changing temperature. So it's quite possible it was very different for bounce five than it was for bounce one. And that's going to have an impact on your experiment. So the ball was changing temperature while it was being dropped. What could we have done there? Uh, we could have returned it we could have returned it to the beaker of uh, water to uh, reheat it. And that way we could be more confident that the ball was at the right temperature every time we dropped it. Last question we've got here is a little bit of a calculation question. So in this question here, it's saying that if we have um, some poten or potential energy is equal to the height above the floor times 1.5, so the only piece of information we need from in here is the fact that it reaches 60 centimetres. That's my height above the floor. So my potential energy is going to equal 0 0.60. That's tricky because that's a centimetres. So 0 0.60 times 1.5. They're giving you the clue. They've put it in metres up there. So 0 0.6 times 1.5 is equal to uh, 0.9 joules of energy. It has to be less than that. If we got an answer of 90 because we'd forgotten that this was in centimetres, 
our answer would be much larger than this one. And that should give us a clue because it reached less height, so it should have less potential energy involved. State why the potential energy you've calculated is different to the initial value of potential energy. Well, some has been lost, some energy lost as heat to the surroundings. They were quite fussy on that one. So make sure you say it's as heat. Okay, and there you go. There's the whole of the practical examination done. Um, I hope it made sense and um, stay tuned for more videos.